Okay, so we've got our unwrapped model done, and now we can start um, creating some animations, and we'll begin with a walk cycle. So we go to rest pose. by clearing scale and rotation and location and then we go to action editor and we begin with the first pose or we have to turn on the mirror and we move the armature modifier below the mirror and then it works um, as a proper mirror So, now first thing we need is a passing pose, or I think that one's called a stretch pose, I'm not sure. So we need one where the legs alternate, and of course we close the jaw. Okay, and then we can go to um, this armature layer and add a key for our IK controllers. So insert key lock rot for location and rotation. So now we can. Okay, we. We take the BIP01 node and also bring it to this controller layer. And now we also add a key for that one here. So now what we can do is we copy this pose and then we press the up arrow and go 20 frames up and then we mirror this pose. And we move it two grids forward then we insert um, the keys again now you see one pair of the legs stays in place and the other one is moving forward so we can kind of repeat this procedure and now we past it unmirrored and simply move it forward two times the step width and add the keys again. Um, so now you see there's always two legs that are still and this is because the, the step width um, is is in line with with the speed that it moves forward with and this is exactly what we have to do to avoid um, slithering around okay so now we can um, set the intermediates intermediate frames so this is some kind of trot animation I think it's really walk. I'm not even sure if this is plausible. Okay, so bring these here downward. Oh! Interestingly enough, um, there was an error with the constraints. Okay, so this one has to be um, the, it copies the rotation from the wrong bone so ik hand.l and dot r and here too okay and now we go back to this bone layer And 
add the keys and copy the keys and past and then oops move them two units forward and add the keys so now we've got a very very crude and raw walk cycle done so now what can we do to improve this so first of all um, we're gonna set those five keys here to uh, cyclic extrapolation and then they will extend even after the first loop okay um, now we can go into more detail for the body so because the body is not still uh, during um, the, all of this action and we can continue we can begin um, by adding in a keyframe for all of those bones here at the first first frame and now we can get to one of the interesting frames this is those uh, passing frames here where the legs are raised on one side and So, in this case, the, the hips will move like this because the leg is moving upward and it also goes up a bit and maybe even to the side. So, add a key. Now, one more thing. We can um, go to the timeline editor and then here turn on um, the automatic keyframe insert and then um, select add replace keys and then um, we whenever we move something it all automatically adds a key so we don't have to go insert key all the time. Okay, now we copy this one here and this one here and here. Now you see it moves from, oops, we should have mirrored this one. So now you see it wiggles from okay um, we have to set these ones here also um, to cyclic um, just add a key at the end and then make sure all are selected and then key extend mode cyclic so those are not supposed to be extrapolated but um, only cyclic repeats oh I forgot got to um, remove the bit 01 from this layer so we don't want it here only on on the other layer so now it's here and yeah oop got to add that keyframe back in move it four mini units to the front and now it's good. Oh. And set the extrapolation mode again. Now it's good. Okay. Mm. So back to the pelvis. So now it wiggles nicely on every step.
So now we can give it some sideward movement. So let's say the pelvis would bend a little bit. And here we mirror it for the middle and we passed it again for the end. And now we can go make sure to select individual centers. And now we can go and give the tail a bit of a bend. Copy, paste, mirror, paste again. Okay. Ah, so you notice this is awkwardly slow. Uh, so we can just make the whole thing twice the speed. This looks more believable for a mammal. Much more. So the pelvis has got a nice movement, but now uh, the front is way too wiggly and doesn't look efficient. So we'll have to counter the movement of the pelvis. Because the pelvis is, yeah, it, it looks the way it's supposed to be, I think. Okay, um, we can add more, more stuff to the tail. So, um, it goes, could curl up a bit here. Maybe only the last few bones like this and mirror paste and then we bring this one here a little bit downward copy and paste Okay, so now onto the spine. Okay, so here's the spine. So we select them all and we curl it. So it bends a bit more than it's supposed to be. And here we mirror it, and here we passed it. Mm, okay, it's still too wiggly, I think. So, and copy, and paste mirrored, and paste, and copy, and paste mirrored. Okay, so now the front also looks more plausible, but the head is wiggling around like crazy, so we'll take the neck and also try to balance it to make it more stable. So we'll point it to the center and then we can use the cursor um, to track the height. 
and so we see it goes up like this and rotates okay so now we can copy paste mirrored and copy this one and paste mirrored and paste okay it's still not quite stable it bobs down uh, so bring this one up a bit and paste mirrored so now we've got quite a trot there So now it's more or less only fine tuning. And we can um, yeah continue with the next animation. So look at it from all angles until you think it looks good. Hmm, the head is still kind of noisy. Interestingly enough, but I think it's okay. It's quite a fast trot. We can add a little bit of curve to the spine. Also, well. Just bring it down a little bit. Yeah, well, guess it's okay. Oh, we can turn off the axis. Those are only making it look noisy. Yeah, so now we've got our trot. Um, so let's call this one trot ahead. And now we can take more or less this as a base for a walk cycle. So the difference between a walk and a trot is that um, for a walk, um, like um, the legs are moving in an alternating position and for a trot they are um, moving in the same same manner at the same time so this would be a, a starting pose for for the um, for the walk so we can simply take this one and mirror it and 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 we've already um whoops didn't quite work out Why? Okay, so we go back So we begin with mirroring these because there are no there are no um, 
no keys here so if we mirror this one and this one and then mirror the others then it should work out all right and now it works okay so now when we when we have a walk cycle the spine moves a bit differently because um, the legs aren't doing the same so we we get a, a little bit of twist in the spine itself um, so what we're gonna do is uh, we get our pelvis bone and we go to this pose here where the leg is passing and so now we get the spine and now we arrange it in a way um, that it supports the other leg bending over rather than um, only the back leg. So we can also make it a bit less evident here because there's not so much action going on to make it quite strong here for the for the spine okay so take this pose and mirror it here and now we've got our walk and again um, we've got to pin down pin down the head because it does weird things because we rotated the spine we'll have to counter this movement on the head so first from the front Okay. So now we've got got this uh, walk animation, and we've got this trot animation. And now we can move on to um, a walk, uh, a run animation. Run ahead. So. The runs are a bit more difficult, so we'll have to start from scratch. So go to the first frame and delete them all. And go to clear pose. And those are also not useful anymore, so also clear these. Okay, so this is quite tricky because we don't really have any references. Um, so there's this this video from uh, 1970 or whatever um, that shows um, supposedly shows thylacine walking. Um, we can just have a look quickly. Um, Nope. Nope. I uh, here. Um so it doesn't really matter whether this is a thylacine or not. Um but you can see that the legs are more or less moving um the same way. Um, but they are only like um, out of phase by two or three frames so 
Mm. We'll just start by uh, moving only one side. So we, we can begin with this um, bend pose. So the one with the bent back. Okay. Okay, so we need back and we bend it and we take the pelvis and we bend the tail. Well, and of course, we close the drawer. Okay, and we need the controllers again. So now does this look good? Oops. So now we'll just take this and kind of define it as our start post. Mm. So I haven't really ever ever um, animated a walk cycle like kind of from scratch like this. So this is a kind of a new thing for me as well. Okay so now we go to the um, like kind of a stretch pose. So the legs, the back legs stay where they are, and um, the spine bends the other way. Uh, probably not as much ah so okay now we're gonna do one thing uh, we bring these leg bones to a third layer because they're only annoying when I want to animate the spine and I have to switch from the controller layer to the the other layer. So now I can simply toggle on this and this one and the lag nodes are no longer bothering me. So this is kind of evolving to be sort of like a kangaroo hop. Uh, Uh, okay, so now we can we could go on and animate this in a progressive way. So we would go and uh, get the next post, so uh, mid air or something like this. Um, but we can also do um, the the other approach. And that means we go and take this pose, and then we move it. Um, and we go a bit up with the frames, so maybe to 30, and then we paste this one, and now we move it forward, say, to 1. Okay, so now there's something wrong here, so we've got to clear the boop zero one 1 for the first and add a key. And now the extrapolation mode is wrong, so those should be cyclic extrapolation. 
and these are again not quite working somehow okay and the rest comes only from these okay so these have to be cyclic again yeah okay so then this will be our uh, mid-flight pose so completely in the air and we'll bring legs forward and the arms Uh, okay, so this all this uh, should already be uh, the the pose where it crashes down, sort of. So we can simply take the keys of the hand and copy them here. Oh, we have to turn on a frame snap, a nearest frame, so we can simply override those keys. So if you you get those uh, those lines here, that means the keys are identical. Okay. Um. So this is going to become the crash down pose. So it um the the uh, the arms will hit the ground first, and then then the then the legs will hit the ground later um, okay yeah so now this looks kind of stiff so we go over it frame by frame um, so again here when it pushes off the the feet should stay on the ground, so we do the same here. We copy the keys. And you see it works um, only about here. So we move them here. And then bring them up here. A bit more. So, okay, a bit forward, yeah, that looks good, okay, next thing that we want to do is we want to get a nice, um, in the middle of a flight pose, sort of, um, so the tail would become a bit straighter, and the spine as well. Oh, okay. So now I found the problem with this pose. I um I use the the pelvis um to move it forward, and that speeds it up here and slows it down here. So we don't want to do that. So we clear. The location and the key, and we do the same here and add a key, and here, oops, and add a key. Okay. So now we can get a longer stretch period here, so 
and bring this one back. So now we can have a bit more um, upward motion here in the middle. So it would really move up. Maybe even bring. No, we can't bring this one more down. We can bring. Well, maybe just a little bit more. So, even more curl here. So, it really looks like. Like a lot of energy comes uh, from this action, and we want to copy this pose and bring it to the last frame, move it forward again. And now here. It kind of becomes slower in the middle so this looks really good and this is the part I don't really like um, maybe it's because of the arms they're not quite as plausible and the leg I think they could they could go a little more to the front here. Because um, you see they're really fast here. And we can simply delete this key so it interpolates between this one and the other one. Okay, so we're we're going to look at it again. It's somehow hard to tell where the problem lies sometimes. So we can bring this one up here a bit. So it gets more of a crash down sort of idea. So the, the arms crash down first and then the legs. So this is coming along now and here it should move downward already. So more downward motion here so now I think it's time to speed this up because it's um, it can be misleading if the speed is not quite right so if we go and I like this. And then here it becomes too slow, so we can go and take this and use K to make sure you got everything. And then bring it a bit forward. Still too much. Okay, so now it's getting um, hard to follow. So what we can do is we get out of pose mode and send the cursor and add a camera. Uh, which we'll use to uh, track our model. Okay, now we can parent this one to the bit 
zero one bone and now we can watch it uh, one more thing we can turn the camera to autographic view and scale it until it looks to be ah uh, well somewhat properly scaled and now you see we can uh, watch it as it looks but we can follow the model so there's I think this area could be a little longer. And uh, now it's beginning to look plausible. Okay, so I think we we'll have a look at the head where it moves. And kind of try to stabilize it. So here we would get a straight head, and here we would already a straight neck, and here we would already start to bring it down again. And here we would get a upward curved neck. So the head kind of tries to stay in place more or less. This is a bit too much. I think that looks kind of good. So now, as you've noticed, the legs are moving um, simultaneously, but we want to bring them a little, quite just a, a really little bit out of face, so it looks more natural. Because on a run cycle, um, the legs are never, never really in face. Because it's not not a perfect jump, um, so we take the complete opposites. So we take um, the left hand and the right foot, and we move them out of range by uh, out of face by say two frames. And now we can check if we get um, stretches somewhere. And to do that, we gotta have a look at our um our leg bones again, and it looks good. So you you never want to have your um IK chains. As a straight line, because uh, then it breaks breaks them on uh, on um, baking. So now I think this looks quite plausible. Somehow it does move a bit like kangaroo. It also somewhat resembles a playful dog or something. So it's interesting. It's not too 
too implausible. Um, and it looks fluid and natural. And that's that's the point, I think. Maybe a little bit more uh, stability for the head. Yeah, it's kind of hard to achieve. Um, I'm not exactly happy with this pose will just bend it a little bit more okay now we got to um, loop this again so what we can do is we add a key for those two bones here that where we have a, a hole and insert available and we do the same here. And we can simply delete those keys and now it should move all right. Yeah, so that looks good. Oh, I think I saw a problem here. Yeah. Didn't notice it before somehow. So we gotta go back. How? Oh. Well, it didn't seem to appear before. Now, if we add this key. Okay, we, we can try a different thing. So we're gonna add the key here, then duplicate it, move it here, and now delete this one. Oh, okay, of course. Um, we gotta move it back minus one. And it's still messed up. Not quite sure why. Maybe we're out of phase. So if we Yeah this this is the same, same pose here. Hmm, now that's weird. So back again. <laughs> so somehow we got to get this one back. Okay, we can copy this pose and paste it here and paste it there and move it forward one and call these. I have no clue why it doesn't want to work. Um, okay, so simply what we're going to do is uh, just 
avoid this uh, problem by moving the uh, moving the IK controller here into the an appropriate place. No, we don't have that issue anymore. Sometimes the simple simple solutions are the best. Yeah, I'm happy with it now. If it runs through frame by frame, I like it. Okay, so now we've got our walk cycle. We've got the trot cycle and we've got this hopping kind of run cycle so this is the first step and next time uh, we'll be creating um, blendings between those two uh, those animations so um, they blend nicely into each other in game Okay, so that's it for this time, and yeah, see you next time.